Yes. What this flume does, we load it with water and sediment, we spin it up, and we let the water and sediments settle out and watch what happens. This dead worm wound up polystrate. And if you recall in the last program we did a few months back, we talked about polystrate fossil worms in the Paluxy yes. and in the Burgess Shale in Canada, where there was three found. Now we have produced a polystrate worm. In the flume. All it took was moving water and mud. The worm wasn't even alive. It was dead. <laughs> And lo and behold, it was, it was polystrate. Now, we built the linear flume in order to make a straight run of the sediments and water. We learned some remarkable things. Now, I'd like to introduce the viewers to a, a geological formation called cross bedding. So you have layers, such as you see here. Yes. And with Specific lines and layers. And within those layers, you have tilted layers called cross beds. And if you look real close, they have three parts. They have a top curve called the top set, a slope called the fore set, and the bottom curve that levels out again called the bottom set. Yes. If you go to Zion National Monument and various other places, such as the Coconino Sandstone, they say these were <coughs> fossil desert dunes. Nonsense. Here is a desert dune. You'll notice the layers conform to the f shape of the desert dune. Yes, yes, this is that's not, very obvious. This is not cross bedding. This right. is waves. There's a difference. Now, I'm, I'm arguing that wind cannot produce cross beds. However, in our flume, cross beds were dead easy to make. Oh, they're marvelous. They're so distinctive. And all it took was flowing water, a sedimentary source, and standing water. And in this case, as you can see in this photograph, we didn't even have standing water. All we did was tilt the flume uphill one degree. So if the water is flowing uphill, you will get cross beds. Yes. Because the water flowing in, carrying sediments, hits the standing water, comes to a stop, and drops the sediments just like a conveyor belt. Many have argued that because the cross beds of the Zion National Monument, etc., are so steep, they couldn't be made by water because water can't make cross beds steeper than 10 degrees. Nonsense. Well, 36.7 degrees. And, and we're quite, I was there observing this. You, we watched it being, being yes. made by water. In fact, water made the steepest slopes. We're pretty confident we could get up to 45 degrees if we pushed at it. This is cutting edge research, and it is a cutting edge demonstration to a global audience that supports very rapid deposition, not long periods of time and when cross bedding, but instead very rapid deposition under the conditions we find in the worldwide flood. Now, did you produce some fossils? Okay, we, uh, we didn't exactly produce fossils, but we did get some newts and we put them in the flume while we were making the cross beds. The reason is these fossil footprints came from the Coconino sandstone, okay. which, like Zion National Monument, is heavily cross bedded. Now, within those cross beds on the slopes, you will see fossil footprints. Some very unusual characteristics about these footprints. They pretty much only ever go uphill. Now, uh, our good anti-creationist friend Derek Ager, uh, while he was still alive, claimed that this can be explained because only the footprints on the lee side of the sand dune would be preserved. Nonsense. That would mean all the animals in the desert were only walking in one direction at any time. It's nonsense. Certainly. I mean, it's for such a smart man to make such a silly comment, has to make one ask questions. But furthermore, if you were to watch those footprints in a trail, literally within a few feet, they will go from very heavy footprints to lighter footprints to claws only, and then completely vanishing, all within only a few feet. In rising water. It's the only explanation. It's the only explanation. Because, I mean, the other explanations are silly. What, did it tiptoe through the desert? Did it grow wings and suddenly fly away? All other explanations are nonsense. However, in our flume, when we were producing the cross beds, we put newts in the water to study their behavior. What they did, the water flowing in would hit the standing water and it would create an eddy right in this region, yes. right here, and the newts would hang out in that eddy. If they tried to escape, there was only one way to go. That was uphill against the current. They would be picked up by the water carried away, and often would even get caught back in the eddy and swept right back to I the exact same the first spot. Hand. And Simple you caught it on film. We caught it on film. So all it takes, one salamander can make multiple tracks on multiple four sets for hundreds, maybe even perhaps thousands of meters. Who knows how far? Now, 
The last thing I want to close with as well, uh, this comes from our good friend David Lines. Yes. Another, yeah, another sand dune uh, place is the White Sands in New Mexico. I stopped in there as well. And, of course, if you look, it is heavily cross-bedded. Right. Now, the thing is, the, uh, uh, they claim that this was, the cross-beds are being formed by wind. No, they're being destroyed by wind. You can see the cross-beds yes. here. And you can see that it is horizontal where it is being worked by the wind. Wind produces waves, not crossbeds. Not crossbedding. What we have learned in this intriguing time together is that the scientific research properly carried out, properly documented, properly understood, points to a worldwide flood in which dinosaurs were caught in an egg-laying context in which ultimately creatures, dinosaurs and fish and other creatures were caught in a judgmental context in the throes of death with their necks arched for fishes, it was their back arched, gills distended, in a horrible and very rapid death. All of this is global in nature. It points to the worldwide flood. But now, you can escape the proper judgment executed against a sinful mankind by turning to the ark of refuge Jesus Christ Christ died for our sins was buried rose again ascended and now in a universal dimension is approaching every heart as he approaches your heart right now would you pray this simple prayer with me just pray this simple prayer dear God I've sinned I need Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus, right now, I open my heart's door to you right now. Come in. Cover me with your blood. Forgive my sins and save me forever. And I will serve you with all my heart. Welcome home. in the 21st century has been sponsored by Trinity Broadcasting Network. And only with your love gift of support can this program stay on the air. So write to Creation in the 21st Century, P.O. Box A, Santa Ana, California, 92711. Creation in the 21st Century is a unique program on TBN combining biblical knowledge with scientific verification. Much of the information that I use on the program is available. Contact us. Just write Creation Evidence Museum, P.O. Box 309, Glen Rose, Texas, 76043, or call us at 254-897-3200. We look forward to hearing.